You're watching a special edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guest is Dr. Stephen Gundry. Dr. Gundry is a board-certified cardiothoracic surgeon. He's on the program today. In fact, we've been trying to get him on the program for the last year. He's here to talk about his new book, The Diet Evolution. Dr. Gundry, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Randy. A lot has happened. You know, I had you on the show about probably in, in, in 2001. Be about right. And you were big and heavy. Yep. And uh, you were a little bit down on supplements at the time, and, uh, and, and a lot has changed. I read your book, by the way, and I try not to endorse a lot of people on the show. Best book I've seen on diet ever. Thanks. I mean, this is Thanks. a must read. This is very good. Well, I appreciate that. So let's talk about your background first. Uh, what qualifies you? I mean, uh, you're a heart surgeon. You were doing transplants. You've invented things that are being used nationwide. Well, I guess you should tell the story. Well, how did it all come to this? Uh, I went to Yale University as an undergraduate, and back in the dark ages, I had a special major where I could do anything I wanted for four years with three professors. Okay. So I chose to study human evolutionary biology. Okay. And that's just a fancy way of saying uh, I investigated how our genes of our ancestors interacted with their environment as we evolved, uh, interacted with foods we ate, with where we lived. And I had this big thesis, and that was about the end of it. And then I went to medical school, and I actually decided to become a heart surgeon, and uh, became a children's heart surgeon as well. And about 1989, I was recruited to come to Loma Linda University and became the chairman of heart surgery there. Okay. And my partner, Leonard Bailey, and I did all the baby heart transplants that people remember. Well, you've done surgeries, I guess. In Israel, I think you said. We've been From all here. over the world. But I mean, did you do robotic surgery? We did robotic surgery. Bypass where, surgery. Where we right? would control a robot here and then uh, be. Uh, the robot would be elsewhere. Okay. We've done that from, we were actually sitting at a convention in San Francisco uh, controlling something over in France. So. Okay, you changed also the way they thought about. Uh, uh, you, you're How we th protect the heart. Okay. Yeah. Um, when I was at the National Institutes of Health, uh, I got interested in how we keep a heart alive during heart surgery. And traditionally, when we work on the heart during heart surgery, we cut off the flow of blood to it so it stops moving. But you try to keep it alive by putting ingredients down the blood vessels of the heart. Well, half of heart surgery, the blood vessels are blocked, and that's why we're there to unblock them. Okay. So that preservative solution doesn't get to where it needs to go. So one day I was studying a paper by a physiologist from 1898 where he pumped blood backwards into the veins of a cat heart. So the uh, cat heart, as long as he kept putting oxygenated blood into the vein of the cat heart, would keep beating outside the cat just fine with blood going backwards through the veins. Because after all, the veins have no valves in them inside the heart, and they eventually get to the capillaries, the same way the arteries do, only the opposite direction. Okay. So I started experimenting with giving these preservative solutions into the veins of the heart. There's a central vein called the coronary sinus, and I invented a little catheter, a tube, that could deliver these things. And sure enough, just like you'd expect, it worked perfectly. And initially, when we started doing it in humans, people thought we were absolutely crazy. In fact, Denton Cooley, one of the most prominent heart surgeons around from the Texas Heart Institute, described it as giving the heart an enema. Okay. And, uh, but everyone who tried it found out that their hearts worked far better than the traditional way. And now it's really the gold standard for protecting the heart. Now, Denton Cooley, isn't he the same uh, guy that said that your pig heart wouldn't last That's more true. than a few days. That's true. What would you do with that, that well, experiment? Well, uh, I'm very interested in xenotransplantation, and that's a fancy way of saying take a heart from one species and put it into some other species. Um, for instance, a, a baboon heart transplant to a human, baby fay, was one species to another. Okay. But obviously, you don't want to go around sacrificing baboons or monkeys to keep humans alive. On the other hand, we eat pigs. and Pigs are uh, very anatomically similar to humans, uh, both okay. in their habits and their hearts. So the problem is a pig is so hugely different genetically from a human that the minute you put a pig heart into a human or a, an ape, its uh, blood supply just thrombosis clots within a couple of minutes. Okay. So what we did was we did some manipulations with the pig to give it supplements, if you will, to have it not 
react to human blood. So the amazing thing is that it was actually my first introduction to the power of supplements in being able to change the genes of one animal to accept the blood of another animal. Okay. But those hearts survived 28 days when it was predicted that they could only go for maybe an hour. Okay. And that was really in the back of my mind when I met Big Ed, who really yeah, changed tell me my about life. That. So you moved to the desert, and you met a patient, you say, that started your new career. Yeah, actually, he was referred to me while I was still at Loma Linda. I'm famous for operating on people that nobody else wants to operate on. Okay. And Big Ed uh, was a 48-year-old guy, still alive, and uh, he was sent to me as a guy to operate on. He had inoperable coronary artery disease. Uh, that basically means that every blood vessel was so clogged up that you couldn't put stents through, you couldn't do bypasses around, and he'd been going around to doctors saying, you know, how about it, will you take me? Well, every doctor looked at his angiogram, the movie of his heart, and said, <laughs> You know, there's nothing I can do for you. All right. So I saw Big Ed about six months after his angiogram. And at that time, Big Ed had lost 45 pounds. And he had gone to a health food store, and he'd gotten this huge bag of supplements, and he brought it in with him. Yeah. And he says, you know, Doc, uh, everybody says I'm inoperable, but, you know, I've lost 45 pounds, and I've been taking all these supplements. Maybe I've done something in here. Well, you know, I scratched my professor beard, and at that time I was pretty obese, so I'm patting my tongue, big days. boy. And I said, well, good for you for losing weight, but it's not going to change anything in here. And I know exactly what you did with all those supplements. You made expensive urine, and you've wasted all your money. You said that. And I said that, and I believed it. Okay. He said, well, what do we got to lose? Why don't we get another angiogram and see what my blood vessels look like? I said, okay. So the next day, this guy gets his angiogram, 50% of the blockages were gone. Gone. Is that unheard of, by the way, to do I'd never natural means? I'd never seen it. You know, you hear these stories of how I cured heart disease, blah, 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 but a lot of times they come from kind of funny so sources. you had never seen it? I'd never seen it. So when you saw that, what, what now? What, what goes in on in your mind? Uh, I had to believe it because, you know, there it was because yeah. I had an angiogram from six months previous. Okay. And the only thing that he had done is lose weight and take a huge number of supplements. So I actually started kind of looking through his bag of supplements. I said, give me those supplements. Right. And some of the supplements he was using were similar to the compounds I was using down in the lab to do my experiments in keeping hearts alive for 24 hours for heart transplant. Interesting. And I said, you know, I'm so stupid. Here I've kind of trusted in modern medicine with these chemicals that we're using, but where did the chemicals come from? Well, they all started with a plant compound that was changed a little bit.